Hey what's going on guys and in today's video we'll be discussing a bit about that how we treat this photorealistic uh, bedroom scene inside of Blender. So let's get started. Now here's the reference image as you can see here that I used uh, and now this is a real image keep, in the, keep that in mind. And now here's my final render here uh, on your screen. Now let's first discuss about that how the models were created. Uh, let me just... Uh, yes first let's talk about the seed. Now this seed was made using the tactic called Subdivision Surface Modeling. I've discussed about it in our previous video so make sure to check it out for more detail. Now basically if I give a quick, quick overview of that uh, modeling technique, this just basically helps to create soft uh, objects uh, like uh, this soft seed. Let's uh, now next move, let's move towards the bed which is the main part of the scene. For the mattress, I basically you added in a simple cube and then uh, subdivided it a bit, so and then added in a cloth simulation. Now in the cloth simulation, I, I uh, made the value of the pressure higher so that I could uh, so that it could would inflate a bit and uh, get the mattress look. Next, uh, if we move towards the pillows. I basically did the same thing I added in the cloth simulation first I added in a simple cube then subdivided it and then added in cloth simulation and then uh, uh, made the uh, pr pressure value high now for the pillows I obviously made the pressure value a lot higher than the mattress so that it, they could inflate a lot more for the blanket it's a different story as uh, I still subdivided it and then added in a cloth simulation but instead of adding in, uh, adding in the pressure I basically just uh, moved it upwards and added in the collision modifier, collision modifier on the mattress so that uh, it could fall down and collide with the mattress to get the blanket look. Now for the side table I also use the same tactic which is uh, the subdivision surface modeling. Now I don't really think so that I need to explain anything else because the rest is really minor things and really easy to make. Now one thing I will make sure to explain is the ocean. Now if you just go here in the shared editor, now as you can see here there are quite a few nodes which, which allowed us to get the look in the final render. First, we have the image texture connected with the texture coordinate and the mapping node. Now, it is going into the hue saturation color node and then in the base color. I just turned down the saturation a bit because I thought it was too, a bit too much because of the compositing as well. Next, I duplicated it and then connected the text mapping node to the vector and then the color to the displacement height and then the displacement to the displacement. Now, now this is a really dirty way to make oceans as it does, doesn't really take a lot of memory or power from your uh, system and it uh, gets a pretty reasonable result uh, if we uh, take a look at how less power it takes uh, if we compare it to the ocean modifier. Plus it uh, adds a lot more detail uh, uh, for uh, a lot more detail compared to the ocean modifier as you can see here. Now here it looks really bad because uh, I'm viewing it from the top mode, top view mode, because I adjusted its uh, uh, texture to be uh, to be to look good from the camera angle. Now as you can see here, if we leave it uh, re to render for a bit, as you can see here, we can actually see some uh, waves forming, and they actually look re really uh, realistic. So. Now th this is the tactic I mostly use and I also use in my endless angel submission. Now so yeah guys that's pretty much it for this video and now we'll uh, catch you around in the next one. Peace out.